My name is Ray Gwynn. I'm the environmental manager for the city of Forest Park, and I would like to thank y'all for coming. I know everybody's busy these days. Hopefully this kind of workshop or public meeting or whatever you want to call it is in informational. I don't want you to leave here with questions. Uh, aggregation is a, a program that has a lot of benefits to it if it's done right, but the city has to vote for it, and if the city doesn't want to vote for it, that's up to them. But I just want to make sure you have the information of what aggregation is all about. Okay? Now, before we begin, I just want to let you know that for restrooms and the water fountain, through those double doors to your right, feel free to use them if you need to get up. Also, if you have a question, I would appreciate it if you would hold the questions until the end of the PowerPoint presentation. We might be able to answer some of those questions that you think of in the middle of the, of the PowerPoint presentation. The way that we will work it is that uh, if you have a question, we will identify you, come up here, go ahead and uh, state your question, and we'll try to answer it the best that we can. And again, the key is don't leave here with a question, okay? We want you to walk away thinking, okay, I understand what's going on, one way or the other. Now, has everybody received one of these? I want to make sure that people, if they, have, if they haven't received one of these, to get one. This is a letter from the city council signed by the city manager and the city council. It just talks about the, uh, ag energy aggregation and um, the issue numbers and things of that nature. Just to let you know that they know about it and they want you to know about it. Okay, I also want to introduce Dan Dieters. He is our energy broker. He is a representative from Energy Alliances. If this thing passes, if the city decides to pass it, he will be responsible, his company will be, re excuse me, be responsible for doing research and putting together a program that will benefit the residents of Forest Park. That would be his job. And then we will present it to the people in two public meetings before everything is decided. But that will be in the presentation as well. Okay? So, without any further ado, we'll, we'll start with the Energy Aggregation 101. That's what I call it because it took me a while to understand it. Now this, whoops. Now we first gotta know what is aggregation? Now energy aggregation. Well basically energy aggregation is uh, the purchasing power of a community is combined into one big unit. And that unit can buy in bulk for their energy. And as we all know, we get a lot of a lot more uh, toilet paper rolls in a big pack for a cheaper price per roll than we do individually. So if we can buy in mass or in bulk, the theory is that we will get a better rate for our energy. And that's what aggregation is all about. We're trying to combine the purchasing power of all the people in Forest Park into one unit and then say, okay, energy suppliers, we have 5,000 households that we're going to throw on the market, give us your best price. And that's how it works. Now the state will allow communities, it can be a county, it can be a township, it can be a village, but a government entity will allow the government entity to do this for you. So that's the definition of aggregation. It's, we just combine all the purchasing power into one group. And then by Ohio law, then the community, if, if they wish it, then the community leaders can then develop a program for the residents. Okay? Now, the program that we're proposing is an opt-out program. There's an opt-in and an opt-out. Well, we're going to do an opt-out. What that means is, because that means there would be more people in the group, what that means is that if, for some reason, if you do not want to participate, 
that is fine. There are no penalties, no fees. All of you have various times when you can do this, and you can do it any time during the contract. So if we do pass this, and we do develop a program, and it is getting ready to start, you will get an opt-out letter. That opt-out letter will say, okay, we have this program going. This is the rates that are going to be proposed that you will get if you participate. At the very bottom, if you don't want to participate, either call this number or turn in this form. You can opt out there. Or you can say, let's give it a try. And if you go ahead and start participating, and after, let's say, six months, you decide, you know, for some reason I just don't like this, you can call, go back to Duke. No penalties, no fees. It's up to you. That's an opt out. Whenever you want to get out. You can also get back in whenever you want to get back in. Again, no penalties, no fees. But we start out with an opt out program. Okay? Now, there's four steps. If we do an opt-out program, there's a certain process that we have to go by law. And this is the process. The first one is the ballot. It's got to be on the ballot, and it's got to be passed by the residents of that community. Okay? If it passes, then we go to the next step, which I see. If it doesn't pass, it's done. We stop right there. You still keep whoever you want to keep. Nothing changes. But if it does pass, then we go to the next step. That's when Dan and his company go to work. They'll start exploring, and you can ask them all kinds of questions after the presentation. And he'll start contacting all these energy companies, tell them what we have, what we want, and, and saying, give us your best price. OK? And he'll put it all together, and then we, we will introduce it in two public meetings. Then, once it's put together, people are notified. They're uh, by the letter, automatic, everyone's automatically enrolled. Remember, this is an opt-out. So you're automatically enrolled in the program. You get a letter saying what the prices will be. And you can decide at that point, nope, don't think so. Either give them a call, turn in the form at the bottom of the letter, or you can say, yeah, let's, let's see what this does. Maybe this is a good thing. OK? So, and there's a website information. You also have access to me. I'm Wright Gwynn, the environmental guy. Like I said, if you ever have a question, please call me. OK? And if I don't know it, I, then I will call Dan. And he definitely knows it. But he's a very busy man. Uh, I would like to think I'm busy, but no, he's much busier. And then the last thing is you may opt out at any time. If it's a three-year contract for electricity, you can opt out in the second year. No penalties, no fees. You can opt out in the first year. You can opt out at the very beginning. It's up to you. OK? So those are the opt-outs and what needs to be done. Now, who is eligible for an aggregation program? Almost everybody, but maybe two groups. OK? The first group is a PIP plus. It's basically a, a payment plan, a government-sponsored payment plan for lower-income individuals. And so they're kind of tied into this payment plan. So if, if there's a, somebody in the audience who's uh, uh, involved with a uh, uh, program such as this, no, you will not be eligible for this program. And the other one is, and this is the one that's really interesting, if you've already signed up with an individual aggregation program, somebody who knocked on your door, somebody who called your house, and you gave them your account information, and you've got somebody who's applying you other than Duke for energy, if you have that, then you're not eligible because you already have an aggregation program. But it's an individual one. Now, you can, if you like 
the communities, you can talk to your energy company, find out if there are termination fees, when the contract's up, and kind of figure out whether or not it's, it's to your benefit to get out of the contract or not. There's a lot of things which we'll talk about a little bit further on in the program. But there's a lot more involved, and, and Dan, can do you want to tell them a little bit about individual? Sure. If you're if you're in a if you answered one of the solicitations on your phone, or if you answered um, uh, something in the mail, you won't get the letter for the program. That doesn't exclude you from the program. That just means that initially you're in another deal with another retail electric supplier. So what needs to happen is you need to either call that retail supplier and say, what is my termination fee if there is one? If there isn't one, you can cancel it right away and we can put you right in the program. Or if there is some sort of a fee and you call our offices, we're happy to calculate whether it's worth it for you to pay that fee or not. And if it is, if the price is so, you know, are so varied that we can calculate upon your annual usage and your bill, and we can tell you whether or not to just stick and run the program out and then join the aggregation program or terminate immediately. But that's our job is to make sure that everybody has that right information. Okay. So you can, you can look on your, and we'll look over part of this presentation is how do you read your energy bill. And so you will know by the end of this night whether or not you're paying Duke or another energy company. Okay. So, why do, or why are we doing this again? Now, for people who have been in the community for quite a while, um, aggregation programs really came to light about 15 years ago, and that's when about when the city decided to try to do it for the first time. We've tried it twice and put it on the ballot twice. Okay, the first time. It was a new program, it was the latest thing in, in energy, and, and it was a lot of bells and whistles, and people really didn't understand it. And, and so I don't think we really presented what aggregation programs had. And there really was not a track record. There was, it was brand new. And so it went down in flames. I mean, it, it just hit the rock and went boom. Okay. Then about six or seven years ago, we tried it again. We put a little bit more educational information out, and, and we got to the point where the next morning, we weren't really sure whether it was going to pass or not. I mean, it was that close. And it went down by about a half a percentage point. We found out like 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock the next morning. And we really, in, in my opinion, we really didn't put out the material to let people know what, what this was all about. There were still misgivings, and again, we hadn't, we've only gone through maybe about six or five or six years of aggregation, so we really didn't have a good track record. But this time we do. It's been in, exist in existence for almost 20 years, over 15 years. We've got a good track record. We know what it's done for other communities. This is not rocket science. This is not new. So we think now is a good time to try it one more time to make sure that people understand what this program is about and to decide for themselves, well, maybe I was wrong or maybe I'm going to vote for it again or whatever, but this we're going to do an all-out purse just to make sure people understand what it's about. But it's, it's not new and it's been proven successful. And that's the key. We didn't have this information before. So that's why we're doing it again. Now, Ohio communities with electric aggregation programs. Right there, you can see the different colors. It can be a city, like I said, a county, township, village, any government agency. I have over 400 here because this, what you see on the map is just electric, but there are also another 150, so there are about 250 electric aggregation programs out. There's about 150 natural gas aggregation programs in Ohio. 
So that kind of adds up to 400. So these people have been using it, I would say, ever since 2007, 6, something along those, those lines. Now, these are the communities in Hamlin County that have aggregation programs. These aren't, aren't all of them. I don't have enough room on the slide to put all of them. But I wanted to get a mixture, townships, villages, cities, so that people will see that, you know, yeah, it, it's all around us. So it's not new. In fact, well, I'll, I'll click a few more. So we're going to look at a couple right here. Cincinnati. First developed it in 2011. 2016, you can see what they saved. It was the first aggregation program that offered 100% carbon-free energy. So you get to select. That's the, another beautiful thing about aggregation. You can kind of select what type of energy you want to, to consume. We can put that in the plan. And then in 2017, Cincinnati added green natural gas options. That's from the landfill. That is really cool where they're pumping natural gas from the landfill and burning it. That's sustainable. We've got enough landfills out there that we can, we got a lot of natural gas from those guys. And so their current contract goes into May 2020. Okay, the West End, Coleraine Township, they just kind of started it 2017. They have an electric one. Uh, you can see the savings, 3.3 billion. Del Delhi Township Electric, 2015, 2017, you can see their savings. Green Township, they have both, and you can see uh, their savings also a percentage of lower rates. Now, outside Hamlin County, just to show that we're going outside the, the county, City of Athens is a county program, okay? 28% reduction in energy prices. And Oxford, that's where I'm from. I was, I was part of that, the environmental commission that helped put this thing together. We get 100% wind energy. Uh, we're getting lower <laughs> rates. As you, as you can see, 10.9% cost decrease in wind energy, annual savings. So it does work. That's what I say, the track record. It does work. That's why we have an expert to help us make it work. All right, now, how do you read your bill so you know what's going on? This is, now this is rocket science, kind of. I mean, all these numbers and different sayings and, and line items and everything. All right, let's look at this. On your left top, you got Duke Energy. That's, they're part of the bill. But now since Oxford, this is my bill from Oxford, okay? We have AEP Energy. They're the ones providing the electricity. Duke Energy is providing the avenue to get it to my house with the wires, the poles, things like that. So both companies have to be paid. But AEP is the one that is actually generating the energy. Okay? So you can see Duke Energy over on the right. Duke Energy, that's the infrastructure, the poles, wires, and everything. And down below, energy supplier, AEP. Okay? This is on your bill, too, except you'll probably only have one unless you have solicited with one other company by yourself. Now, over in the middle of the left-hand column, I circled it. That's the, watt, the kilowatt hours I used in that month. 676 kilowatt hours. That's not very much. The average household is about 1,000, 1,100. I don't use much, as you can tell. My house is very dark. Wright sits in the dark most of the time. I do. I do. They can't see me in the dark, you know. All right. So that's how much I use. So as, as you can see, the balance forwarded, current electric charges, $41. That goes to the poles and the wires and all that kind of stuff. And then the 
3485, that's AEP, that's for the generation of the actual electricity. Okay, but you make one payment, and you send that one payment to Duke, and then Duke divides it up. You don't get two bills. You get one bill just like you've always done. You send it to the same person, which is Duke, and Duke then divides it up. Okay? Now, this is where you start comparing things. On the left, on the right top, you see price to compare, Duke Energy. On my bill, it is almost six cents a kilowatt hour. And if you look down at the bottom of that column, the AEP, it's a little more than five cents. So there's about a cent difference per kilowatt hour. Now that doesn't sound like much. But if you've got an average household of 1,000 kilowatt hours that you use, or 1,100, you're talking 10 or $11, just for average, dollars a month. Multiply that by 12, that's 120, $130 a year for doing nothing, which, you know, sounds pretty good. Um, so I did my calculations. Price could compare, that's the difference, 0 0.00774 per kilowatt hour times the number of kilowatt hours. So I saved, remember, I use very little electricity, just a little over $5 a month. Okay, that doesn't sound like much, but that's 60 bucks. Now, on the next page of your bill, you can, they have a yearly summary. And you can, you can do this on an annual basis then. Because my savings, again, is 0 0.00774 per kilowatt hour. I use 5,786 kilowatt hours a year. So my annual savings is around 45,000, 40, not 45,000, $45. <laughs> now remember, I'm about half of what the normal is, so you're talking about $95, $90, $95. And if you have a lot of kids, or you have a two-story house, and you have lights going upstairs, downstairs, you've got two TVs going on, the kitchen, uh, uh, dishwasher, or whatever is going on, all of a sudden, there's electricity everywhere. And then in the winter, when you have to heat a, two, a bigger house, mine is a very small house, it can really add up. So keep in mind, this might not sound like a lot, but if you double it, triple it, or quadruple it, that might be what yours is. So now you can go home and kind of play with the numbers and see, well, what, what if I do get something one cent less per kilowatt hour? What does that mean to me? And, these, and this is pretty cool. I like the monthly. I always like to compare what I do from one month uh, in a year to the, the, the previous yearly month. So this is what, I, I live in a 1,000 square foot home, and uh, that's for a month. Now, Forest Park. What does Forest Park want to do? What is their proposal? The goals of this program are two. To pursue lower and more stable energy costs. That's the first goal. We're not going to do it if we can't do that. It wouldn't make sense to have higher, un more unstable prices. That, we just won't, won't do that. And then to provide a choice of which type of energy you want to use. Do you want to use brown energy, which would be more like a coal and the natural gas? Or do you want to use more renewables, which would be wind, primarily wind, I think. Solar is getting there. Okay, now what are the objectives? All right, to develop an opt-out program, like I said, we kind of explained what that was, and let the residents choose, one, whether or not they want to participate in an opt-out program. You choose. And then whether or, not, uh, whether or not they want to use traditional energy resources or more renewable energy. You choose all that. It's up to you. Now, you in the chairs, Hopefully you've gotten one, the most commonly asked or frequently asked questions. We tried to put them together for you to kind of help 
Uh, and if you have questions or have additional questions, remember if you can just hold on until the end of this presentation and then we'll have whoever wants to ask a question, we'll have them up at the podium so that we can record it. Because this will be shown on Waycross Community TV and it's on channel, hold on one minute, I know this is going to drive Dana crazy. There's one right here on the chair. Waycross Government Access, channel 23 if you have Spectrum or channel 853 if you have five optics. So it'll be on TV, but it also, I'm going to get the link, YouTube, and I will send it to everybody that I have a email address to so you can watch it at your home. Okay? And again, if you have any questions, you can always call me. All right. So the ballot language. Now, another reason why it probably didn't pass is because the language, if I saw that without knowing what it was, I would freak out. On November ballot, issue 26 is the one for natural gas. Shall the city of Forest Park have the authority to aggregate the retail natural gas loads located in the city of Forest Park and for that purpose, in it into service agreements to facilitate for those loads the sale and purchase of electricity. So, well, it shouldn't be electricity, it should be natural gas. Such ag aggregation to occur automatically except where any person elects to opt out. Now, if I was going in there cold turkey and I saw that, <laughs> no. I would put no because it's, it's it's so hard to understand, but basically it's just allowing the city to work with an energy broker to develop a program that supposedly, if we go with our goals, lower and, and more stable energy prices and a choice of what you want to burn. Okay? And the other one, issue 27, that's electric. And we've got that switched around, too. <laughs> so I, I keep the chuckles down. I, you know, if, if this is the only mistake I've made, I'm in, I'm in good shape. It'll and be right you, on the ballot. And it'll look right. <laughs> I, believe me, the state knows what they're doing. I might not, but the state does. And uh, so that's 27. Again, exact same thing, except we're talking about electricity. OK? Now, how does this process work? All right, the first thing that's going to happen is you, the city's got to get permission from you guys. If the city says no, nope, then nothing happens. It stays the way it is. If you want to go individually with an aggregation company, your choice. But as far as the community goes, it's done. If you vote yes, then we will develop a program for electric and for natural gas, and then we'll have two public meetings to let people know all about it. Then, remember, you voted, the residents chose, if we go this route, chose to do this. Then the residents choose, once again, because remember, the opt-out letter is sent out before the program starts, so the resident chooses, well, you know, I was all gung-ho there for a while, but I just don't think so. So if, if that resident decides, nope, don't want it, nothing changes. They make that phone call, they turn in that form on the letter, it's done. However, if you say, yes, I, I'm going to give this thing a try, then we're going to have a new energy supplier. Remember, you still pay for Duke because they have the poles and the wires and all that kind of stuff. But you're automatically in, and you choose between do you want renewables or do you want more traditional energy sources. That's the, those are the decisions. So you've got to decide whether you want to do this, want to give permission to the city. You've got to decide once, if you say yes, then you've got to decide do you want to participate when the program's ready to go. And then if you say yes, I want to do that, then you get to decide what type of energy you want to burn. It's all your choice. And there's no fees. 
if you say no, either at the very beginning or throughout the contract. You just call a number and you're out. Now this is an example of an opt-out letter, it's Norwoods, and if you can see down at the bottom, that's something that you could either turn in or there's a phone number or a website that you can go to to let people know, that, no, take me off the list, I want to stay with Duke, or who, whoever you want to do, do it with. And remember, any time during the contract. Now, we put this in because a lot of people are concerned about these independent or individual companies that go door to door, or you get mailings in the mail. A, a good one is um, Clean Choice. Have anybody gotten Clean Choice Energies? I mean, they're every three weeks. And, and how can you say no to Clean Choice? <laughs> Read the fine print. You, you, it's good to say no sometimes. But you get them by mail. And they say, oh, give us a call. We'll talk. You start getting involved with them. You don't know where it's going to go. OK? I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying be careful. Companies want you to call them back. All right, here's clean choice. Now they're saying, you don't need to call us back. See all these good things that we're going to do? Just sign up, 100% pollution free. I mean, it sounds great. Until, after you sign and send it in, until you read the contract on the back. How many people bother to read that? I mean, a lot of people don't. Some people are wise that they do. But if you look, you've got to check to see what, what's the introductory rate or the variable rates. I mean, it might be really low the first three months, but then after three months, what happens? How long is the contract? If you, or if you sign the contract, can you get out of it? If, if you get out of it, are there termination fees? Are there penalties? And if it's variable rate, what does that mean? After three months, could they just explode? Which is, a lot of them have. Because it's a variable rate. And you sign the contract. And the introductory offer sounds so good. And of course, the people at your door. Now, I've got this in here because Forest Park is very good at, at vetting solicitations door to door. If anybody is going to solicit in Forest Park door to door, they have to fill out forms, police department vets them, and we make sure that they are who they say they are, and they have to wear this, this badge when they go door to door, so you know. If you see somebody knocking on the door and you don't see the badge anywhere, ask them, no thank you, close the door and call the police department. Because they're going around the community and they're not supposed to be. And they don't, we don't have a clue what they're trying to push. Okay, but I did something just for you guys. You can put that in your window. So I'm going to have this on my website. If you want to print this out and tape it to your window by your front door, it's not 100% foolproof, but they'll get the idea. You know, no solicitation if you don't want them to do that. Okay? So that's aggregation 101. Um, hey, right? Go, go back to a couple of slides ago, and I want to show their introductory offer. It says right there, 7.7 .7 cents a kilowatt hour. That is two cents higher than what you would pay if you did nothing from Duke. So that's their initial offer. And then if you read through the thing, it just gets higher and higher and higher. So those kind of solicitations are, they're hoping you don't they're hoping you just sign it and send it back, and it's going to cost you a lot. There are going to be way better clean energy options through the aggregation program with Forest Park than there will with these folks. So you have to know the price to compare, and that's also on your bill. The price to compare right now is between everybody's bills different. It's between between five seven and five nine right now, 
and most of the new aggregations we're putting on are in the high four cents, middle, middle to high four cents. So, so as, as we go through the process, we'll, we'll get that information out to everybody as, as well as what kind of energy that Forest Park is, is going to offer and all those other things. So. Okay. So I guess now would be a great time if people have a question, just raise your hand. We'll identify you if you would go to the podium and just state your question so that we can get it on the camera. And then we'll, we'll answer as many questions as y'all want. So come on up. They probably all want to get back and watch a Bengals game, I'm sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Emerson, Forest Park resident for 30 years. Um, I guess my question is, first question would be, I'll, I'll do one right now. If this does pass, what's going to be the process that will happen, um, the process to go through to determine which supplier to pick, uh, how you evaluate the cost, how long will it take to get the program up and running, that type of thing. Sure. So what, what initially happens is that after the vote, if it passes, the Board of Elections has to certify the election, which takes about 30 days. So once we need that to have Forest Park certified as the aggregator. So what happens is, is we take all the information, we get all the forms filled out for the PUCO that we need to get Forest Park certified. Then we file them all with the PUCO, and there's a waiting period. Then once Forest Park is certified as the aggregator, some of, the, some of these folks around the state certify themselves, the brokers. We don't do that. We want to make sure that Forest Park is the entity that's, that's the aggregator. And once that happens, we'll go out and we will get the list from Duke uh, with the authorization of uh, Forest Park's uh, public officials. We'll get everybody's... Uh, information, their load usage, everything like that. We scrub the list of any identifiers and things like that, and we'll send it out to five or six suppliers, and we'll tell them what we want. Say we'll want 12, 24, 36 month terms with renewable energy on every one of those terms. And what are, you know, we don't ask them for certain kinds of renewable energy. We want them to say, okay, here's what we're offering. Because if I say we want wind, there might be something that they have that they've invested in that might be better for Forest Park's needs. So what's going to end up happening is after we get certified prior to the uh, uh, opt out, there'll be a process where we gather all this information, we gather all these terms, we gather all these rates, and we present it to the Forest Park City Council and say, here's our recommendation. Okay. And it depends on, it depends a lot on what Forest Park wants as to what we recommend, but we're gonna, we're gonna give you every option, brown energy, green energy, uh, and whatever you know, other thing that might come along between now and then, because we believe that if we, move this rapidly, we can be up and running by June of next year. Because there's a lot of waiting periods within the time from the election, from election day until the day we can actually start it. There's a 30 day waiting period for the certification to the PCO. There's a 21 day opt out period. There's a 10 day waiting period once we've submitted the opt out letter. So build in that, say, six months from election day or seven months from, it's really six, it's really, the day of the certification. So built into that six months, there's about two months of just kind of sitting on our hands, making sure that the PUCO is able to process all this information from Forest Park. Okay. So the opt-out letter would include the costs. I could compare that to my Absolutely. Cost. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. My name is Hugh McCullough. I've lived in Forest Park since 66. And I've got two comments first and three questions. One comment is, I don't see there is any downside to voting yes. Is there a downside uh, no. to no vote? Well, to a, to a no vote, there's lots of downside to a yes well, vote. I mean, no vote kills it. A yes vote, even if we get through the whole process, and we get all the prices together, and we all get to the altar, and the priest is there getting ready to say, kiss the bride, the, the council could say, you know what, we're not going to do this. 
at this time. You know, if the, if the market isn't right, if, if things aren't the way that, that haven't worked out like we thought they would, and if there's not a savings, I can tell you this right now. If there is not at least a projected savings for the first two years, we're going to tell you to hold and wait for the market to turn. Okay. We did it in Delhi. <clears throat> so we had the folks in Delhi where we had some, there was about a six month period where the market had really dropped, but after that, it was expected to go up. We said, all right, we need to hold, and then we'll come back in August of that year, and we'll try to tell you after all the other pieces of the market were put in if it's a good program, and they ended up doing it. Okay. Now, you did clear up a question I had earlier also about those of us that are already in an individual account. Like mine, I've got gas and electric. I'm signed up with First Energy and somebody else right now. Sure. So I'm not immediately eligible for the new program without getting out of those programs. Do you have any idea how many people in Forest Park are in that situation where we're already signed up? Because these people have been beating on us for the last 10 years to sell us individual accounts and so I, us joined in. I can, I can give you kind of some, what we've seen, a little bit of experience in that. About 65% of the folks will end up on the program in Forest Park. There's about 35% of the folks that opt out, are in something else, or on the PIP program. So that's what we believe we'll end up seeing at the end of the day. I will tell you this, that Energy Alliances has several hundred thousand electric customers and uh, 150 or 60,000 gas customers. We keep getting enrollments every day out of our 60 plus programs that we run of people that are jumping out of their old one and jumping into this one. But every time, every one of our staff will tell these folks, make sure there's no early termination fee. Okay, and one other question. Uh, the, shall I say the green energy versus the brown energy, that's electric only, right? There's no green or brown with gas. Well, there's, there's green options for gas. Is there there's, there's, okay. there's biofuels, which are, which are landfill derivatives that, okay. that some folks use. Um, there are uh, renewable energy credits you can buy, uh, and those things will all be offered to city council to decide whether they want to put that on. And, and I will tell you this, our renewable energy, every Energy Alliances runs several, I think it's, I want to say 40 some electric programs, just electric, and every one of them has a renewable component that you can choose, even though the default is the brown component. So you can choose that green energy component in those programs, and it's not 7.7 .7 cents a kilowatt hour. It's about a tenth of a cent more expensive in our programs than the brown energy. Okay. Now, is the choice between green and brown individually well, selectable, or is that going to be a they'll say? One, one will be a default. Yeah. Naturally, it will be a default. You've okay. got to have a default somewhere. So with the city will need to decide which one will be a default. And if, if you don't aren't comfortable with that default, then, then you choose the other. Okay. So it is individual uh, yes. selection. Yes. Now. Okay. Thank and you very much. You're welcome. And I will tell you that our green energy and our brown energy programs are both saving money for folks. And no matter getting, which you choose. And, they're, and you know, there used to be that you think, about, well, it's going to cost a lot more if you do renewables. It's amazing how those differentials have come almost side by side. I mean, the renewables have advanced so much that the pro price differential between the two is getting smaller and smaller every day. So I think you'll be interested in seeing what the, what the prices are for those two types of energies because they're not going to be you know, like a big difference, in my experience anyway. And I know uh, Oxford, that's where I'm from, their default is renewable energy. And um, city of Cincinnati is all renewable energy, wind energy. So that tells you that things are beginning to shift. But we don't know what kind of program we are because we haven't even, you haven't even given the city permission to do it yet. That's after the ballot if it passes. Next question. Good questions. I am uh, Nathan Hermanson. I've lived here for about eight years. 
Um, I use a do seasonal shutoff for my gas. Um, basically, I think it was four or five years ago, state of Ohio allowed uh, utility companies to charge a, a fixed rate per month, and I think it's about 33 or $35 a month that Duke charges. Um, and so the seasonal shutoff saves roughly 150, 200 bucks a year, depending on when I shut it off. Uh, with this aggregate uh, contract, is that gonna be possible or is that something that would kind of go away? No, all the services that Duke provides stay exactly the same. The only thing that would change is if you were in a gas program mm -hmm. is you would pay the aggregation rate and in the gas program. So when they turn it on, the aggregation would just kick right back in. Okay. So there's no difference. It's just like if, you, any, if any folks, I don't know if anybody has even billing here, even billing's a, a service that they provide and there will be no change in even billing. There'll be no change in anything they do. I hear sometimes people say, oh, they, if you're in an aggregation, they won't come and turn your electric on if it goes out. They wait and do their own customers first. That's, that's, they have no capacity to even understand. They have no capacity to know which house is on an aggregation or which house is with Duke. They come and turn on whole neighborhoods. And so none of the service portion, you pay for it. You saw it on the bill up there. You see what you pay for. And, and you pay for all that. So no service is changed in any way, shape, or form okay. when an aggregation starts. Yeah, that makes sense. And I have one other question. Uh, we're talking about an opt-out program. Um, when I lived in Glendale, the gas was not, there wasn't an option. And uh, my question is, if this were to be a non-opt-out program, uh, do the rates, do you have the potential for getting better rates, main, mainly not offering the choice sure so so what glendale has a, glendale has an opt-out program it's a, it's the same as this one is oh. but you can get out of energy alliances doesn't allow once the program starts for you to be locked in for any kind of fee or anything else so you can come and go in these programs as you please there is nothing keeping you in the program say the opt-out period goes from March 1st to March 22nd, and you said, oh, I forgot to opt out, you just call the number and you can opt out at ours and there's no charge. I don't know about Glendale's program. There might have been a charge for that because that's the way they yeah. used to do a lot of them. I probably didn't know enough about so, it either. But, that, I mean, that's, that's why we're here, I right? Get, I so. guess my question is more is, is there a non-opt-out aggregate uh, option that cities use in Ohio? Where not there used to be opt-in aggregation which means you you that we would put a program together and residents could choose to participate okay. in that the problem with those programs and we ran several of them between about 2009 and 2012 is the electric suppliers and the gas suppliers have no way of knowing how many homes they're going to get so what they do because they have to go out and buy this as a commodity, they put a huge amount of risk in that price mm -hmm. and it drives the price way up. The reason that folks do opt out programs is because we can get these, this load factor, that's how much, that's how much energy Forest Park uses and how they use it and the time of day they use it. And we can get these suppliers to drill that down and take all that risk out of that pricing model. So what we do is we get all the prices back and then we go back at them and drill them down even further and try to get a, even a better price after we're done. All right, great. So. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Herbold. I've lived here 49 years or so, quite a while. Um, recently we took bids on the possibility of putting solar cells on our roof. And um, we're probably not going to do it because uh, we probably have too many shade trees blocking the sun part of the day. But I wondered if we had opted to or did opt to take the solar cells, would that be impacted by the aggregation program? It would not. So what they call that in, the, in that section of the industry is what they call a behind the meter service, which means you hook that solar in behind your meter. So if you didn't have enough solar, say, for a month, you would have your electricity right. come and fill in that. Say you had 50% on your solar and you needed 50% from Duke. Right. So what would happen is you would get the aggregated price for that 50%. 
that you use from Duke. Or it, from the other. All it does supply. is decrease your usage yeah. from the utility. It doesn't have anything to do with the service or, or the price of the aggregation. But if I produce more electricity and got credit for it, it, it would still be the you same. You still get the same credit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello. How you doing? My name is Carmen Henderson, and I've been a resident of the city of Forest Park for 10 years. I'm a homeowner here. And my question is, I have a couple of questions. <laughs> but the first one is, um, why do they keep trying? And so I know you said that it's been on the ballot twice. This is the third time. So it makes me kind of like, OK, what is really in it? Is there something really in it for the city of Forest Park? Do they get a better discount than the residents get? Or why do we keep trying? I can, I can answer at least my. Go ahead and you can. <laughs> I, I volunteered to do this the third time. When Ray Hodges was here as a city manager, I said, this might be a good time to try it one more time. Because of the reasons that I said before, I didn't think the first time we had any education. It was just out there, and it just blew people away. The second time, it was like the fifth or sixth year, we really didn't have a good track record of what was saving what communities what. And so it almost passed. We did throw a little bit more uh, education into it. But the third time, we do have a track record. We, we, as we saw in the PowerPoint presentation, there are savings available to residents, which is always the number one goal. But I'm the environmental manager. And one of the things, and this is what kind of turned me when I lived in Oxford, and we went aggregated, and we went to renewables. And the price was still cheaper than what Duke Power was giving us. That if we can get more renewable energy consume more of those type of energies as far as the brown, the, the coals, and the natural gas. That, that is my, besides trying to save residents money, I think it's time that communities need to step up. This is just me on a soapbox. It's time for the community to, to, to try to say, OK, we need to start changing our habits as far as what we're consuming. and so. I am pushing very heavily to, to make sure that we have a renewable component in the plan so that we can take our next step into more energy conscious decisions and environmentally conscious decisions. I think it's time. I think everybody, well, a lot of people know it's time that we've got to change some habits. And so if it passes, we're going to have a renewable. If it doesn't, it's, it's up to the residents. I have no qualms if, they, if the residents say no. But for the price and for the type of energy, that's why I'm doing it. Okay. Well, but, I'll, but, let me answer your question in a little different way. I know why Wrights wanted to do it. <laughs> but here's, here's what I'll tell you. Your question is exactly the reason. I've, had, I've run about 90 of these, these ballot issues throughout the state of Ohio. And your question is exactly the reason that it failed. There wasn't enough information out there. People saw that language that you saw up there before, and they thought it was a tax. It's not a tax. It's not a tax on anyone. It's not even obligatory for anyone to use. So I think a lack of information about it initially was that was the first part, and I think that kind of bled into the second one, where there are enough people still around saying, what's going on? But the reason to do it is because one thing Wright's been saying all night is the track record for savings and, and now we're getting more and more into the renewables that he's looking for have become you know, too good to ignore. We're helping too many people save money. So I think, and, and the, last, the last part of your question was Forest Park doesn't get anything out of this. This is just, they're just offering, they're just offering a choice to folks to do that. Okay. But you know they get a chance to make all the decisions on our bills though. Well, they get a chance to give you the option and you make all the decisions on your bills at the end of the day. Because but I thought if you opt if you opt if you're in it, you don't opt out and then You can opt out any time. Right, you, but I'm you, just saying, but basically you're given the City of Forest Park to work with you sure. to be able to make the decisions for us. You make it at the Correct. The city council meeting. Pe people say things. People say things. Well, how can city council get into my bill? Well, the government's already in your bill. 
Duke is regulated by the PUCO and they're setting your rate already. And those are people that you have not elected. Those are people that are appointed by the governor and probably other committees up in Columbus. So when your rates change on service, that's someone you have no ability to go complain to unless you drive up to Columbus and start screaming at their door and they may not even let you in. So, so, the, so I believe this is exactly the opposite. You can go into the council chambers, you can say, here's what they're proposing, here's what I don't like about it. You have no option to do that with the utility. So, and, that's, and those are the things that we have to make sure people do understand, is that you, you and, and, and you also get to vote at the ballot box in two years if this, you know, you could say, you know what, you guys made a bad decision. They won't, they're gonna make a great decision. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, can you tell me if um, other township and cities in Ohio have been, have you questioned the citizens that, you know, actually have taken, this is, you know, working for, is it working for you? Do you like it, like a customer satisfaction survey? How satisfied are the, are the homeowners, are the residents throughout Ohio? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't hear a lot from people when they're happy. Mm. <laughs> we only hear when they're mad. And we, get, we have a tremendous lack of calls from folks that are mad about the programs. We get some calls from folks that are upset, like you just said, that their government made this choice for them. But we have steps in place for that. Energy Alliance uh, maintains, along with the suppliers and the PCO, a do not aggregate list. So if you don't want to hear anything about this ever again, don't want to get any mailing, don't want to be included, you just send right an email, your name, not your account number, don't ever put your account number anywhere, don't ever give it to anybody, and, and we can take you off of the list and you'll never hear about this ever, mm -hmm. as, long as, as long as we're in charge. Right, and so that. my last question yeah. is, so um, you're the energy broker, Energy Alliances. Correct. So are you like one of the largest brokers in Ohio or? We're the largest one in Southwest Ohio and Southwest we have about 15% of all the aggregations in Ohio. Okay, and so how did we come to the point to get Energy Alliances? And why weren't the residents you know, given the opportunity to participate in that? That's a great question for Wright. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. We, we, we had uh, the city manager, the, the human resource director, and myself interviewing the, the companies. And uh, we decided based on that information that these, this company represented our community better than any of the other companies. We did not bring in, you're right, we did not bring in outside residents. Uh, we decided that we kind of had an idea of what we were looking for to, to help us through this process. Uh, there is a lot of uh, misunderstanding among residents. That's why we're doing these public hearings. Exactly what aggregation is, we thought we kind of understood it maybe a little bit better. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But uh, that might have been a failing. Maybe we should have had a committee and do this. I don't know. But what we did do was we did have members of the administration sit down and talk to these companies, and we thought their credentials were the best. You know, I want to just make one, one other point is that I'm a little shy about the city of Forest Park right now, too, because when we had the Wenton Wood, I know this is totally separate, but the Wenton Wood School District, they had a big meeting like this, and I was at it. And they talked about, you know, for us to pass a levy for that. And the levy did pass, but they said all the things that they were going to do, like, you know, they're going to continue to involve the residents throughout the process. And I haven't heard of one. No, I might have missed it. <laughs> but I haven't heard of one meeting that the city of Morris Park has had or the contractors to keep us up to date and, you know, to help with the decision making. Process. Did you put your email address on the... Yes, then you'll get more stuff from Wright Gwynn than you will really want. I, 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 I understand. I will keep you in the loop. And if for some reason you feel like there, you've still got questions, call me. Okay. Do what? You can also unsubscribe. Can, exactly. <laughs> good questions. All these are good questions. Uh, Wayne Coates. I'm a 35-year resident of Forest Park and. Some may know me as the former mayor. Um, 
That was a great question of why do we only have Alliance, Energy Alliance only here tonight? And I think uh, Wright handled that rather well. Um, but I had a question because having seen where we're having this meeting tonight, I looked at my utility bill today. And and of course, I will tell you that I'm getting a little bit better rate than the, the 05 or 04. Actually, I'm 03.1. You're Actually, looking, I think you're looking at your distribution my, I'm charge. I'm looking at my delivery charge on yeah. the electric and my, uh, but you know, the, the thing is, I've been paying utility bills long enough that the one I'm getting nowadays almost takes a forensic uh, accountant to read. Um, you, got, you got all kinds of delivery riders uh, and I guess my question was going to be is, uh, what, what am I going to see on Energy Alliance uh, as far as what Do you have part, it with you? Probably already are because I, I noticed on Rider AERR is the recovery cost for compliance of alternate energy resources. That's, that's a um, requirement. Requirement out of the state house that they just killed with House Bill 6, I think, if, you, if you're paying attention to that. I am paying attention to that, and I don't want to pay for those uh, nuclear plants. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the if you if you do you have your bill there? Uh, no, I, okay. I just made some so on, notes on off the of very it, bottom of your electric when it says explanation of charges mm -hmm. and a Duke bill. Rider R C R E and R that's all A E R R. That's all, all P U C O. That's all P U C O stuff. Yeah. There'll be one line on your bill that says it says explanation of supplier charges and it'll have the price that they finally if they choose to do this that they finally have your bill will change by well, not even the line just the number so it'll say it'll say and then on the back of the bill if you turn it over it'll say what your price to compare is so when you get when you get the opt-out letter and you turn it and you and you say okay here's what forest parks offering and you turn the other bill over it'll say uh, the price to compare this month is this whatever number that is, and then you'll know whether it's a good deal or not. So which which one of the riders do I expect to see from? You can see them all. So I, I none of that see, part of the bill changes. I won't see the itemization like that, or yeah, you'll, you'll see it all. Same, it doesn't change at all. Okay. All you'll see is at the bottom is when they when they go. There's a, there's about two or three little lines at the bottom where it says your charge. But to get that real number, you have to turn it over. Yeah, I do. To see the to see the yeah. number and then to see what the price to compare is because it's very kind of hard to calculate all those together and then multiply it by the kilowatt hours. The easiest thing to do is look at that price to compare well, on the back. I got a calculator. I can figure it out. Before um, I can do it, I can do it. Well, I, I have problems. <laughs> I had to help right. Yeah, you better. <laughs> so, Thank you. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty easy to, to justify one versus the other. Okay. I'm Etta Hampton, and I've lived here in Forest Park 28 years. I have a couple mm. of questions. Uh, how many people in some of these other communities have opted out of these programs, and why do they opt out? Uh, it's about, it's less than 1%, usually 1% to 2%, and in, in that's anybody's guess why they opt out. I mean, my personal opinion is they don't have all the information on the programs, or they're already in something else and they never realized it was taking off. And what is Duke's opinion of these segregation programs? Um, I, I don't think they care. I don't think it, because they have to provide the energy anyway. And when we take that off of their plate, it's probably a savings for them that they don't have to go out and do all that because we have, aggregations have a pretty fair piece of the pie here in Hamilton County. So they don't, the PUCO no longer regulates the, pro they have to just basically sell it what they buy it for. They regulate all the service and delivery charges. So Duke is still being paid for their portion of, that they do? Yes, their service, yes. Their services. Lights, poles, wires, come to your house, read the meter. Does anybody ever seen a meter reader yet anymore? I haven't seen that in a long time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing? My name is Kiva Elam. I've been a resident of Forest Park for over 30 years. Um, my question is, if it does pass, um, and then after we get the proposal and people decide to opt out because they're not in agreement with, you know, what Forest Park wants to do, is there a minimum number of residents 
that have to participate in order for um, us to get the benefit of aggregation? No, not at all. So the price will, whoever opt out opt, opts out, and that's that's the suppliers. They have a formula that they use, I'm sure, to and, and the load profile. They have all that information, and they work that into their price. But no, there's if if 20% opted out, the price would not be any different. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I got two, I'll ask the easier one first. Um, how often will the contracts be reneg renegotiated or looked at? As soon as, whatever term they decide on. So okay. if they decide, if we say, okay, the market's great for 24 months, then we'll do a 24 month term, then we'll go back and start reevaluating re re it. We don't, we reevaluate the second the old contract's done. We start looking at the future and making sure that you know, we see and give them the opportunity if, because we've had, we've had uh, townships extend when the market dropped. Right. So they'll have a two-year contract, and then we see the market drop, we go back, and then it'll extend. But you won't see the opt-out letter until the extension would come. Okay. Okay. Until there's a price <clears throat> change. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my concern is this thing is, is I think Ms. Henderson, was it? Um, kind of touched on and right, you kind of touched a little bit, baby, on it, is once the government is given some control to do something, uh, what prevents it from turning from what we're doing to you to what we're doing for you, or for you to <laughs> doing for you to <laughs> what we're doing to you? I'm here from um, the, I'm, I'm from the government. I'm here to help. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Because will, will we at some point be forced to use renewable energy, even if we don't want to? Will we be forced to opt in, whether we do want to or not? And I use this as my example of the tax structure here in Forest Park. Uh, a few years ago, we changed it from 50% tax credit to 100% tax credit and jacked up the rate from 1% to one and a quarter percent. And I warned people then, there was ballot language that said, council can change this at any time by better council. And they did just a few years later. They changed it down to 25% credit. So taxpayers got really, from my language, screwed in the whole process. And I warned people, said, this is going to happen. And it did. So what's to prevent this from changing at some point later on to something that we may not like that we're voting for now, but later on, the council can change it to something different? Well, there's two things that, that are kind of at play there. So they, when we do the certification for Forest Park, we have to issue a plan of governance to the PUCO, which lays a framework as to how the program is to be run. And that doesn't happen for till, you know January or February. And they'll look through that and decide that, okay, here are the things that have to be uh, in this plan of governance and then how, uh, how that is to be done going forward. Now, they can go back later and change the plan of governance after an iteration of a contract, but I've never seen anybody do it. But the second thing is, is a tax is something that, that you gotta pay. You know, people don't like Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, but we were getting one of them, right? Well, you can't opt out of Donald Trump right now, but you can opt out of our program, right? You can always leave. Stay that way. That's my question. Will it always can, remain that way? It, it, it will remain, the plan of governance will remain until they would change it, but you, what always remains in our programs is that you can get out at no charge at any time. Who has the ability to change the plan of governance? That's my question. Is that the, back to the voters? To the council, that? if they wanted to go and redo the whole certification. Yeah, but will they bring it back to the voters to say hey, we're changing? They don't have once you're once you're once you've voted on it, it's it's pretty much it's pretty much going down the tracks. But the certification, that plan of governance is something that they could alter if they wanted to if they wanted to do that at a later time. But but if if we're still around and Energy Alliance is, continues to run the programs, there will never be a time where we don't have a revolving door a program where you can come out and go and leave as you please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. My name is Jack Duval, and I've been here 53 years, and I voted on these last two issues for them anyway. But there's two issues, 26 and 20. That means you can either have electricity or gas, you can have, or do you have to take both? You can vote either way, and, and they'll, if, if gas, say gas would not go through and electric did, we would certify the city just on electric. If it would happen the other way, we'd certify them just on the other one. It's been my experience that if, if one passes, the other will pass. Now I get the, um, 
guess five dollars a month, whatever it is, for shutting off your air conditioner when it's ninety-five degrees or something. Does that still hold? Um. So is is yes. If you you still control your thermostat. Yes. Yeah. Always. Yeah. This is just so no, you're going to control. It. They control. It. I mean, I get five dollars for giving them the option of turning my air conditioner off. Oh yeah, off. that that service. Yeah, you're yeah. talking about you're talking about how, the smart meters yeah. and yeah, you, you absolutely they still do that. That none of the service changes. Now your organization, where do you get your money from? We get a fee from negotiating the contract. It's five thousandth, or I'm sorry, five one thousandths of a cent per kilowatt. Point, point zero, 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 zero five. five. Yeah, that's how they did we, we're, we're very transparent with that, with the government, with the uh, city council when we made our you, initial proposal. When you usually, you showed originally like X number of millions of dollars at all these different, um, how, what does that average out to basically for the individuals? For the household? Yeah. We kind of played with those numbers before yep. and we came up with something like 30, we, Five thousand or something that you would get per year or something. Uh, you talking about our fee, or are you talking about what a oh, it's per household? Makes. How yeah. much? How much would it be coming per household? Less than a dollar a month. How many? Less than a dollar a month. Really? Yeah, but we'll save you a hundred and some dollars a year, more than likely, if the numbers are right. And you know, that's for city council to decide what that rate will end up being. But, but I always say to everybody, folks, you know, if you had thrown $100 away in your garbage outside and you knew that it was sitting out there, would you go out and get it? Yeah. <laughs> I would. And you don't even have to go out and get it. You just have to get enrolled in the program. You don't have to do anything. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ruth Thomas, and I've been a resident for 43 years. My question is, if this should pass and you start sourcing the different uh, energy companies, are they domestic? and or global? The energy companies that we presently source are out of Texas. Okay. So the ones that we use around here, AEP, and they're, they're headquartered in Columbus. I, I, I assume you're referring to the commercials that we're seeing on television. Yes. They, this might shock you, but since that's a political campaign, some of that is a pretty big fabrication in my opinion. Okay. So. The, right. that, that is House Bill Six is a is a essentially a, a nuclear plant bailout oh. that we're going to all end up paying for. Thank you. Hey, you said uh, getting to that you could sign up with the different organizations and to PIP or PPI. It's PIP. PIPP, -P -P, I think. What was yeah. his question? The question. Yeah. Go ahead. His question was, "What is what is the program that that is excluded?" And it's, I guess you sign up. I don't know a whole lot about it. I guess you sign up through Duke, and it, it's it's an assistance with your with your electric bill if you meet, I guess, certain income requirements. I never understood that truthfully, because why would folks that would meet that requirement not benefit from cheaper energy? So you're, if you're a smarter person than me, if you can answer that one, because I have no clue why we wouldn't be helping those folks more than anybody. Anyone else? All right, this show is being taped, and it's going to be put together, and I will distribute it through the emails, and I will give you a link that you can then click on. It will be next week. Also, I told you that it was going to be on uh, television, Waycross uh, Government Access, I think 23 if it's uh, Spectrum, and 853, yeah, five optics. So that'll be on TV. But I will give everyone that I have an email address to the links to this one. And we also had a Waycross Community Media panel discussion Thursday. It was with the power brokers, myself, and Dana, who works at uh, Waycross Community Media. And that will, I'm going to send that out tomorrow. So you can listen to that, and then you can listen to this and the, all the questions and everything 
next week. I would encourage, I would love it, if you know of people who would be interested in this information, the, your neighbors, Forest Park neighbors, your Forest Park friends, your Forest Park family, if you could forward this information to them so that they will know what's going to be on the ballot for November. And if we can all kind of get the word out, then people can make up their minds what they want to do, and we'll let the chips fall where they may. Now, if people want to actively promote this program, the city cannot do that. By law, we cannot. All we do is give you information. There is a sign-up sheet, though, over there, where if you want to put your name, a phone number, and email address, I will give it to Dan, because I don't want any part of it. But if you feel strongly that this is a good thing and want to participate, then Dan will be back in touch with you and, and figure out you know, what you are interested in doing. But again, the city wants no part of that. But the sign-ups are right over there. Are you going to get a copy of your picture? I will, I will attach that to my email. And you will also see this, though, on the, on the uh, email link, YouTube email link. This will all be on there. So I won't send you just, just the PowerPoint presentation, but you'll have this production, this whole evening affair. And this, it'll all be there. Yes, sir. Yeah, the list you said over there. Right. Is that a separate list from the Yes, yes. It's a completely separate sheet. I'll call you later. <laughs> I, okay. Thank you for coming. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. My phone, you've got my card.